Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome to Ottoman's Life. My name is Ali. Hope you're keeping well. Thanks so much for watching. As it's Halloween, I thought it would be fun to have a look back at one of my favorite Lego sets in my collection. The Haunted House. Ooh. <laughs> This set was actually marketed under the Fairground collection uh, to complement the carousel and roller coaster sets, uh, with the idea to have a haunted house themed attraction for your uh, fairground city builds. Lego also created a pretty cool backstory to the sets. I mean, the design is very much inspired by the Adams Family House. And the story goes that this was home to a Samuel von Baron, one of the world's greatest villains. He traveled the world in search of ancient artifacts to steal for his collection, but it appeared his greed got the better of him when he snatched the Rigu Ruby, and the ancient pharaoh Hotep cursed his manor for a thousand generations. Today, Samuel von Baron may be gone from this world, but the curse haunts his manor to this very day. In fact, inside his mansion, his own portrait is the source of the curse. Von Baron commissioned the portrait shortly after he acquired, okay, stole the Rigu Ruby. When he was finished, a strange glow started to emanate from the portrait. With each glow, he had to listen to the Pharaoh's terrible jokes until he was driven mad. It was clear he lost it when he ordered the construction of an elevator in his manor. Where would the elevator lead to? Nowhere, was his response when asked, continue on to say, well... It had its ups and downs, and started to laugh crazier than the Joker. <laughs> this is what I love about Lego. They really go all in with storytelling, and this story is just like the story you would see or listen to while you're waiting in line in a haunted house ride at your theme park. It's so tacky, it's so silly, but it so works. The look of the set is perfectly in line with its gothic undertones. It is fully enclosed and it would not look out of place in any LEGO City arrangement, which is actually the reason I bought it. The color scheme with its dark olive green, gray and black hits the horror vibe we all associate with a haunted house. Personally, I think it looks like Norman Bates' house. What do you think? The opening door mechanism is really cool, inviting you in to stay a while, or stay forever. If you're a Commodore 64 fan, you know that reference. That was personally just for you. The access ramp is a great touch for wheelchair access, which is one of the minifigures which was really cool to have. The printed coat of arms, which has a bat on it, contains the first of many Easter eggs. The Roman numerals actually spell out 6007, which is reference to a set named 6007, the Battlelord, which is an iconic Fright Night set and character. The gravestone has the initials TC on it, which is a reference to Lego designer Tiago Caterino, who used to work at lego but also has a great uh, youtube channel i'm a big fan of his i love his videos but that wasn't the only nod to him as the organ inside was actually named organ caterino too wow opening up the set is when you can see all the story beats and easter eggs which continue for long time lego fans the sphinx head that you can see in the centerpiece of the interior is actually a recreation um, of a set called a Sphinx Secret Surprise, set number 5978. Uh, the storage chamber, which has got the Orb of Ogle, which is a, just a skull in a green jar, uh, which in the story, it shows this from Alpha Team. Um, it's actually a yellow artifact from the Orient Expedition theme. And this resonator is a device that was built by the Baron, was used to harness the power of the Rigu Ruby. Yeah, the story beats still continue, it's awesome. The obelisk is actually from uh, the Adventures theme, whose hieroglyphics spell out Ogle, which is Lego backwards. This creepy attic space above the main entrance contains spooky elements such as skull candles, a hanging skeleton, which is probably a reference to Lord Sam Sinister, the identity that Samuel von Baron 
adopts later on on the Orient Expeditions theme. And then, of course, is the titular cursed portrait itself with a light brick. And when pressed, you see the haunting silhouette of the pharaoh of bad jokes. Knock, knock. Who's there? Ice cream. Ice cream who? Ice cream so you can hear me. Okay. If those were the kind of jokes the Baron was hearing, I would also lose it. The main feature, of course, is the thrill ride itself, the elevator drop tower ride. You can place two, two minifigures in the cabin, use a crank behind the build, and slowly the cabin rises and rises and rises until it drops. And that is awesome. It's really cool. Although some have found to be a little bit boring after a while. Not me. I, <laughs> I loved it, and I still love it to this day. A motor for sure, if you can fit it inside, will help it make probably less cumbersome. We just keep going it around and around and around, but uh, I, I like the fun of winding it up, if I'm perfectly honest. I also read in a lot of reviews and a lot of users that found this feature a little flawed with the chains going out of sync. I have to say, I have never faced any of those issues. I mean, put it this way, I built this over... Um, three years ago and I moved it a few times in that time and it's just sat there um, when I got it out uh, for this video the, the mechanism worked perfectly fine uh, but I can see why it could happen I would say it is a delicate and novelty feature this uh, elevator shaft um, mechanism in my view though I'm just thoroughly amazed at the cleverness and the ingenuity behind the fact that you have a cabin free falling down and not crashing. It's amazing. And as such, the build experience was so fascinating to do. It was a little bit repetitive when you're building up um, the elevator shaft, but it not so much that it became annoying. In fact, it was a really fun build. And I have to say, I do miss sets like this from Lego. It was released at around about a price of 250 pounds. And you can see it, it has presence. It's got a great technical feature. And in fairness, I don't see sets like this now from Lego at this price point. So is it a showpiece? Probably not. Is it a great addition if you're building a Lego theme park? Absolutely. Can it be part of a modular, modular Lego city? Yeah, but you probably need to have the right environment around it and some modifications to its base plates, etc. All in all, it's an amazing, unique set. And being a horror fan myself, a Thrill Ride fan, this is still one of my favorite sets in my collection. It's still built up. I still pull it out to play with it. Even though it's still retired now, you can actually pick this up at the original retail price or even lower in, in sources like Bricklink or eBay. I really hope you like this little look back at one of the old sets uh, that Lego has produced. Let me know if you're really interested in seeing more of these look backs. I love doing them and I had such a great fun doing this. Until next time, guys, peace and love and happy Halloween.